How many of you spent time in the library as a kid? Oh, it was my favorite place. Even before I went to school, I would go to the library with my mom, and I'd spend hours. Well, it can be the saving grace. Let's find out if it happens in this book. Hi, everybody. It's Gretchen Shepherd with day 25 of Nod Pod Pomo and Book Bites with the Book Lady. Well, as I mentioned in the intro, the library has always been a really important part of my life. My mom volunteered at the public library in the town where I, near where I grew up, and she would take me with her when she went to go do her volunteer work, and they would let me roam the library on my own while mom was repairing books. Oh my goodness, I was four and five when I was doing that. I was in heaven. Yes, the library was important. And in this book, the library is a pretty incredible thing too. It's actually the library card. This is a book by Jerry Spinelli, who has written the award-winning Maniac McGee and so many other books. He's so much fun to read. And in this book, The Library Card, he has written four separate stories of four separate children. And I'm going to share with one of the stories a little bit about from one of them, um, about a girl named Brenda. So welcome to The Library Card by Jerry Spinelli. Brenda, day one. Five minutes. Brenda froze. Once she had watched a TV show about zebras. The narrator had said that sometimes a lion gets real close to a zebra and stares at it, and the zebra is so terrified it doesn't try to run. It just stands there waiting to be devoured. How dumb, thought Brenda at the time. She did not understand the zebra. Now she did. Now an even meaner beast came stalking, ready to pounce, ready to swipe away her very life. And she was paralyzed with fear. Four minutes. Four minutes. 240 seconds. She squeezed her pillow to her chest. She tried to concentrate on her TV, on the figures speaking and moving But she could not. The screen was like a half-remembered dream. When first she heard about it, she had scoffed. Impossible, she said. It would never happen. A date had been set and a time, but it was so long off it did not seem real. It could not be seen coming down the street. It could not be heard. In her room, things were as they always had been. Her beanbag chair, the bed, Ace Monahan, weird kid as always on the tube at 6.30 Sunday. She simply could not believe that anything horrible was on the way. Three minutes. At times like this in the movies, some people would try to look at the bright side. They would say something like, well, it's been a good life. How stupid. The convict on death row. In the final minutes of a movie or before the commercial, that's who she related to. Sweaty palms, clutching cell bars, the raw, terrified stare, the footsteps of priest and warden, the faint buzz that means they're testing the electric chair, the seconds ticking louder, louder. Yes, that two minutes. She understood. In one movie, a man being strapped to the chair cried out, Just give me one more minute. How silly she had thought then. Her hands and feet were spongy. She was tortured by thoughts that she might have done something to stop this. Had she tried everything? Had she cried? Yes. Pouted? Refused to speak? Refused to eat? Refused to move? Yes, yes. But nothing stopped it. It was a ten-ton steamroller squashing every protest in its way, crunching. One minute... So fast. She had never known time was so fast. It did not help to remind herself that she was not alone, that it was happening all over town. She had heard once that the greatest fear was fear of the unknown. 30 seconds. 
She could hear footsteps now on the stairs, rising in the hallway now, closer on the other side of the bedroom door now, the warden, the priest, a lock. She should have gotten a lock. Ten seconds. Had it been a good life? The doorknob turned. She opened her eyes as wide as she could, swallowing, gorging herself on the glowing screen, the beautiful screen. Three, two, one. And the door swung open. Her father walked in. He looked at her. She clutched at the bedspread. She wailed, one more minute, please. The warden smiled a weak, regretful smile. Sorry, kiddo, he said and pushed the power button. Plink. The picture shrank to a point and vanished. Flushed. Gone. Herself with it. Was it her imagination? Or could she really hear 10,000 plinks all over town? The great TV turnoff had begun. And that is just the beginning to this book, The Library Card. And it's the beginning of one of the stories in the book, The Library Card. Some of them are humorous, some of them are heartfelt, but there's four wonderful stories within this book. And I just had to share what that is. When a whole town does the great TV turnoff, what's going to happen? Oh my gosh, Jerry Spinelli and the library card. That's your book bites for today. And as always, keep looking for the beauty hidden in plain sight. It's all around you. But the first place you'll find it is when you go look in the mirror. And I'll see you next time. And thanks for being here.